Thank you very much, everybody. Mr. Thank President, you. what did you mean by calm before the storm yesterday? What did you mean by that? Thank you very much. You'll find out. ABC's Cecilia Vega asking President Trump about that cryptic comment this week and that wink as well. The Powerhouse Roundtable joins me now. ABC News political analyst Matthew Dowd, Gene Cummings, the Wall Street Journal's deputy bureau chief, NPR White House reporter Jeff Bennett, and Susan Glasser, Politico's chief international affairs columnist. Welcome to all of you. So much to talk about this week, and I, I want to start with those comments. Susan, what did you make of that? I, I don't think anybody expected that. No, nobody expected that. We're still waiting to find out. Uh, the storm, is it the next hurricane in the wave of Atlantic hurricanes that seems to be extending on forever? Is it some international crisis? Is it North Korea? Is it a follow-up to the fire and fury comment of President Trump in uh, back in August? We don't know, but we, I think we all feel like maybe it's just this week's cliffhanger uh, in the episode of The Trump Show. And, and, and Jeff, his aides did not know about that. Yeah. And, and, you know, the and it, military standing behind him were probably cringing. That's right. And the fact that no senior Trump administration official, including the vice president, wants to engage on questions about what the president actually meant, I think suggests that the president was just speaking entirely off the cuff here. He was in the mood to make some mischief and maybe mess with the press a little bit. Whether he's talking off the cuff or not, the world watches. What do you think the reaction is around the world there, Matt Dowd? Not that you're, you know, our world affairs <laughs> correspondent, but I uh, think you tales, got this Tales of the cryptic comments. I, I was thinking about this as I was watching him, and obviously this has been going on off and on since January 20th. This is the Halloween presidency. And I say it in that he says all these kind of things that bring horror to many people, that he says these things and people are scared out of their minds, and that everybody else is ask, ask, asking trick or treat. What is about to just, what's about to happen in this? This is a presidency that is all visceral. That's all visceral action. I don't think there's any strategic part of this presidency at all, let alone North Korea, Iran, whatever it happens to be. I don't think he fundamentally has a strategy. The only strategy is leave him wanting, leave him wanting. And, and leave him guessing. And, and Gene Cummings, it, it, everybody's mind, is, as Susan said, I think went to North Korea. That is without question the biggest crisis that we're facing now. He tweeted this week, presidents and their administrations have been talking to North Korea for 25 years. Agreements made massive amounts of money paid. Hasn't worked. Agreements violated before the ink was dry, making fools of U.S. negotiators. Sorry, but only one thing will work. And I, is he calling his secretary there a, a fool? Um, so, so where are we on, on North Korea? To, to me, it's coercive diplomacy. It's part of that. It is. Um, I mean, it, there's an argument to be made that we have tried the same thing over and over again with North Korea, and it hasn't worked. I mean, we at the Journal have a video about with these experts who've been tracking North Korea who believe they already have nuclear weapons and that we already are there and we have to learn to live in a world with that. So, I mean, if you look at Obama and Cuba, he said, look, we've done that for 50 years. It didn't work. It, there's an argument to be made. What's, I think, disorienting right now is that we have a good cop, bad cop scenario going on as we approach North Korea, and the bad cop is the president. That's what we're, that's really disorienting. Usually the president's a good cop and the secretary of state yeah, or <laughs> defense secretary would when be you, the bad cop. We often wonder the rational actor in this. Well, it seems to be the head of North Korea is the rational actor in all of this. I actually think there's one thing we haven't tried, which is letting North Korea and South Korea manage the part of this and figure out what they want to do. It's always been a policy of ours and Russia and China's is we're somehow going to impose it on the Korean pe Peninsula. We're going to impose it on them. And yet, if he if he perfects a missile that can reach the United States, I'm, I'm not sure we're going to let them work. Well, and I don't think what, whatever we're doing or have done isn't going to do anything to stop that. We ought to get to a place where our policy should be con containment or deterrence, just like it is with every other country that has nuclear weapons. We are not going to do anything to stop him from getting a nuclear weapon. And, and Jeff, we know what happened with Rex Tillerson this week. He actually right. came out and said, I never wanted to resign. And he didn't quite say he didn't call the president a moron, but his spokesperson came out and, and later said that. Does he stay? Does he pretty much have to stay now? I think he stays at least until the scheduled uh, trip to Asia, which is happening in early November. It doesn't seem that there's any situation in which he could step down before that. But it does beg the question, can he be effective in this role? Because a Secretary of State is effective 
that, you know, his, his relationship really rests in the, in the kind of relationship that he has with the, with the president, his perception overseas. And yet you have all these world leaders who believe that he thinks that the president of the United States is a moron, as was reported, and that Trump doesn't have, uh, you know, uh, faith in his top diplomat. And, and Susan, I want to turn to Iran. The president is expected to announce next week that he will decertify the Iran nuclear agreement. So so what happens with that and then it ends up with Congress? Well, that's right. It's going to be a lot of fancy footwork because basically since the campaign trail, since his speech at the UN, remember President Trump came out, he said it's an embarrassment, it's the worst deal ever. So he's left his advisors scrambling and now they're actually going to put out, it appears this week, uh, a, a almost an awkward split the baby proposal where Trump is going to, with great fanfare, say, I'm not certifying the deal. It's no longer in the national interest of the United States. But the policy is going to be basically, we're going to you, Congress, but we don't really want you to do anything just yet. And now we're going to see if we've created leverage in order to negotiate a better deal. Which of course, the, the Iranians... The discomfort. I mean, everybody was going to get comfort in the idea that Donald Trump was surrounding himself with people that knew what they were doing. General Mattis... Rex Tillerson, all that. But now in two instances, it looks like he's going to do exactly the opposite of what they want. In one, he's disregarding diplomacy in North Korea, which Rex Tillerson seems to want to do. And the other, Jim Mattis seems to be saying, no, we need to not do that in Iran. It's actually working. And if we move forward in the same way, it'll continue to work. He seems to be going the opposite of those things that people give us comfort.